just going to go ahead and get some strips ready because I'm going to start working on this main one here. I've got this piece pretty rigid. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fold that up and do much with that or not. But figure out a direction I'm going to be able to take with this. I don't like both of them pointing up. That kind of bothers me. Maybe I can work this so it comes back around on itself. There we go. Maybe something like that. And I'll, I'll force that bend in there. We'll go ahead and set this bend. So I'll cross that. I'm going to come back around on itself. Pulling it and forcing it back into that. Now that's locked out in place. Go ahead and do the same thing with this one. A little bit more there. Maybe maybe I here we go, maybe we can make that just look nasty, all knotted up. Let's try that. Kind of feeling that. You can always add more paper to this thing if it's not quite looking the way you want it and change it up. So I've wrapped that across that little corner. It's going to take a little bit more tape. It's a lot bigger turn. Now we took that big old funky thing that was hanging out there and we've already created quite a bit of a gnarly looking little turn going on there. I don't know if I, still now, this thing's bothering me out here. It's like a damn curly cue or something, Charlie Brown or whatever is sticking out. So, I've got to figure out something different with that because that is bugging me. Kind of liking this big one though, way it's wrapped around and it's coming back around. If anything, I could even attach that to this and make this stem a lot more stable. Um, and I can do that in a number of, of different ways, whether we just flat out tape it on, build it up from there. Um, just frankly, the glue, extra glue and paper clay we put on here, we can attach it that way as well. But it's already kind of wanting that, that shape. I'm gonna have to do something with this dude. I may just wrap him, may I'll force him back over here. And force him together. I think I'll do that. Why 
one hour. Sad thing is you do a lot of this. Most of these people aren't even going to notice the detail or anything, but hey, that's what makes me feel good and makes me proud of it. You do have those few that want to come up and really take a look at it and see what you've done, and that's when you can really sit back and be proud. So I just went ahead, stuck it over, wrapped it up around this end, and taped it up. You know, put it on the angle. You might see it. Ah, who cares? I'm happy with it. Still feel like I need something up and out right here. I may just start another piece of paper, kind of come up and out, fill in that spot. It just feels like it's lost something over on this side. I've just stuck it on here, started wrapping. I'll go ahead and curl this dude up. Go ahead and get this curve forced in here. I hard took a look at that. I don't like just that curly key going on. So I think what I'm going to do is attach it to the base. Builds it out, makes it look like something. Something obviously went wrong in the development of this dude. I mean, who's to say what a pumpkin or an effed up jack o' lantern is really supposed to look like? Go ahead, now that I got this established, I'm just going to tie it in a little bit better to the main stem. Hopefully that's not looking too whimsical. Can't stand it when it looks like that. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? I'm my own worst critic, so but I know that as I go on, I can make this thing change it up and make it look a lot nastier than what it's looking right now. But that kind of you know that gets me a pretty good stem built out. It's pretty pretty rigid. That's the whole point in rolling that paper so this is all still pretty soft. You know, 
I mean pretty hard so you don't have a bunch of soft spots and once you've got this stem established the next step is to go ahead and add a single layer of paper mache over all this duct tape completely cover and wrap this thing up with paper mache one layer is all you're going to need go ahead and bring the paper mache down over the body of the pumpkin and that's going to help lock this all together it's going to stiffen this up and more importantly it's going to give you a surface that you can paint on and work with um, not much you can do with this duct tape the only reason the duct tape's even there is just to form it make it stiff and hold this paper together so that's going to be my next step i've got to tear up some more strips and start laying this mache over the stem. Alright, I went ahead and decided to go ahead and draw a face out. Um, just went with the standard, you know, small slant eyes, big grin, jagged teeth. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this out before I add the layer of mache on the stem here. The main purpose is just so I can speed this thing along instead of having to do that weight and then do this. I think I can get both of them knocked out pretty quickly. In addition to drawing that out, I'm going to go ahead and add and draw in my hole for the bottom. And this is going to give me access to be able to paint the inside as well as put a light um, put a stem through it, whatever I end up doing with this thing. So I'm going to just draw this out, give me a guide for cutting. There's a couple different ways to do this. Um, one of which done in the past it has been cut out the bottom and take all the stuffing out and then start working on the face. I found that to be a lot more difficult. Um, I'd like to try to keep the stuffing in here as long as I can for this for the entire process just to give this a lot more stability. Um, and I've also found the best way to cut into this is using a Dremel and I just use a um, multi-use bit. Uh, seems to work really well. As you can see as I start cutting into this, this stuff is it's like cutting wood at this point. Um, and I may, as I start to cut it, modify the shape and just as I see fit as I'm going along. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this thing out. I'm going to speed the video up so you don't have to be uh, bored to death with that as well. But um, you'll see what I'm doing here. Once I get everything cut, I'm going to go ahead and proceed with putting a layer of paper mache over all of this. I uh, went ahead and got my strips torn. And we'll begin that process. Here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and stop right here and take a minute to talk about something. I'm one of the things you're gonna run into as you're doing that is and you're going to feel it pop and catch and matter of fact it caused me to kind of go offline there a little bit is we've got those strings remember it here and once that thing catches it's going to cut right through it but it may take a little bit and it's going to pop and snap at you uh, doesn't really matter that we've got an extra cut here uh, all that's going to wind up getting covered with the following steps that we take as we finish this thing out go on to the next
No, it's probably really difficult to see because you're seeing the inside stuffing of the paper, but got the mouth, everything cut out, got these jagged teeth everywhere. Not too overly concerned about following the exact drawing that I had. Uh, just there is kind of a helpful guide. And we'll go ahead and cut the bottom. Now that we've got the bottom cut out, you see that? It's a large enough hole that we can get our hand in there, we can get the inside painted and do whatever else we want. Uh, you can still see all the strings down here. We'll be getting rid of all that once we empty the bottom out and clear out the inside. Um, it's probably really difficult for you to see that, but this has uh, gotten fairly thick. It's probably a good eighth inch, three sixteenths uh, thick of nothing but solid paper glue, and it has just created a very rigid piece. So we're gonna have a pretty good pumpkin here to work with. I ended up keeping these last year. I made several of these and also made a moonshine still and these were just the perfect shape. I sprayed them down with some water so I could shape it around the, the still but I ended up making kind of access holes, What ha I don't know what you'd really call them, but uh, um, and then glued them in to make it look like it was a welded panel on that still. So it does have some additional use if you've got other projects you're working on. Now that we've got everything cut out, I'm going to go ahead and shave the top and let it dry and we'll be able to ready, be ready to go to the next step. Get my glue out here. We're going to do this the same way we did the pumpkin. All right, now that you got everything covered, remember we're not doing this really for structural integrity as much as we are just trying to cover up the duct tape and give us more of a uniform surface. It's going to make it easier to get the paper clay to stick uh, when we build this up as well as when it comes to painting it. Uh, duct tape, I don't know if you've ever tried to paint over it and mess with it. It's very slippery. It doesn't take uh, paint very well at all. So main reason we're doing this is just to cover it and make it easier for us as we go down the road. Um, one thing we are doing a little bit for structural integrity is building up at the base of the stem and going ahead and taking those paper strips and bringing it down the body of the pumpkin and that's just going to help tie everything in and make it a lot stronger. Uh, I went ahead and stuck this up on this little piece of Tupperware uh, just because I've had a lot of glue pour down. I didn't really clean up my mess from when I had cut this out. So I've got a lot of paper dust everywhere and it's just created a big slurry. But I've just stuck it up to make it easier for it to dry out. Um, we're going to move on to the paper clay next. And I'm going to show you at least two methods and talk about uh, two other methods that you can use as well. So we're going to get everything together and get started on it. <laughs> 